Warning! 22% of all poker content on my website. Go now! I might be the only person in history to have won over a million dollars in a Starbucks. Let me tell you a story. This is what, one of the craziest things has ever happened to me. It was fucking wild. So, I'm a professional poker player. That's one of, one of my trades. And just a little bit of a backstory. I turned $50 into millions of dollars playing poker. It's all publicly available knowledge, so you don't need to just take my word for it. And one experience I had. Okay, so there's this series, online series, called The Scoop the spring championship of online poker. It is the series, it's the biggest series in, uh, in all of the year rounds in online poker. And there's one event in it called the main event. And as you might guess from the name, you very perceptive little human there, it's the main one, it's the biggest one, at least in, the, in terms of who gets the, the most money for first place. So it's a four day event, and my friends and I are hanging out in Mexico. Specifically one friend, Ben, he and I traveled the world together playing poker, it's a fucking dream. And we were playing in Mexico because if you play in England, you're playing around the hours of like 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. But if you're playing in Mexico, then it's like early morning, finish at a normal time and everything is working with a circadian rhythm, you don't feel like shit after a few days of playing. We're in Mexico grinding. The scoop's going pretty well. I think I won one tournament already for something like 60 or $70,000, which I was already very happy with. And we're playing on this Sunday, the last Sunday. Uh, Sunday's the day that everything happens in poker, the Lord's Day, but also the, the degenerate gambler's day. Let's drink to that. We're playing all the main events and it's going really, really, really well. And we get through to day two. I'm still in all three of the main events because there's like a high, medium and low and get day, through to day three, still in, I think, two of them, and I actually get through to day four of the high main event, the $10,000 buy-in with $1.2 or $1.3 million up top. We're sitting nine of nine, meaning there's nine people left out of the hundreds of people that started, and I'm in ninth place, I'm in last place. So our, our expecta expectations aren't super high, but I've got a, like, a little trickle of confidence always, always with me uh, whilst I'm playing poker. So we're going into the last day and I'm playing in, my, in, in our Airbnb and everything seems to be going pretty well. Waking up, having our little smoothie, getting our, getting our health grind on, or at least the best that we could do back then with our ignorance. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, the smoothies were like mud. We just put loads of nuts in it. Nuts in it. it just tastes like dirt. And lo and behold, I wake up, I turn my computer on and except I don't. My computer doesn't turn on. I'm like, Ben, I think my computer's broken. And he's like, so get up, turn mine on. His doesn't turn on either. What? I'm like, oh, this is fucking weird. I guess the, the power's out in our flat. So we, we go on our phones and we're checking online and there's another poker player who's also in the final nine, coincidentally, of this tournament, who's in Playa de Carmen in the same city as us in Mexico. And he's saying, there's a power cut. So we check online and it is the biggest power cut that Mexico had had in decades. It was a third of the country's power had just gone out. This was like spring 2017 or something like that. You can check it out. This was a problem because we're sitting on day four of a poker tournament with a stack of chips that's probably worth $200,000, $250,000 or something like that. And if we can't make it to the final table, we will almost definitely come ninth. So that would mean we only get like 100 or $80,000 or something like that. We'd miss out on, on average, 170 to $200,000, something along those lines. So we're in a dilemma. So the two options that we have are either try and hot foot it to a nearby city that does have internet and electricity, or try and find some kind of like backup generator or something nearby that, that can give us like momentary internet at least. The other person that was a poker player, his name is Connor, he tries to leg it to a different city. Ben and I, we, we, we don't throw our eggs in, all, in a single basket, if that's the term. We don't, we don't straight away go. We're, we're searching around to see if we can find somewhere more comfortable and more safe because Mexico, you know, is Mexico and we're, you know, stupid little white kids that can't defend ourselves or speak any word of Spanish apart from hola. 
So we wanted to try and stay in the touristy area. So we, we stick around, we stick around for a bit, but there's only a couple of hours left at this point before the tournament starts. And we're getting to the point where it's like, okay, we're, we're gonna have to go to a nearby city. This is, this is rough, but we're gonna have to go. Just as we are about to make that decision, some of the power goes on. And I don't understand power cuts, and I don't understand how this happens. So our flat, not on. Parts of Playa del Carmen start lighting up, and people start sitting around. So what we do instead of going to a nearby city is we take a little bit of a gamble and we start searching around for different places that have internet. I don't know if you've ever searched around Playa del Carmen for little bursts of internet. On some level, it's very fun. <laughs> it's like a little Easter egg hunt where you can look for fucking like six MBS, whatever it's called, like really, really shitty internet. And we eventually found this haven, glorious haven of a little organic juice bar. They had internet, they had dicey internet. So we sat there and we played and every now and again the internet would go out and because we weren't stupid enough to tell the people that we we're playing for ridiculously high stakes of money, some guys walking past and we're like, hey brother, can you fix the internet? It's gone out again. He's like, yeah, yeah, sure. Let me just pour these couple of drinks. We're like, okay. <laughs> I'm just in a, in a pot that's worth $30,000, that's fine, you, you do you! It was definitely, I, it wasn't actually stressful. Bruh. We, we were in the mindset where whatever happened, happened. We were just grateful to be able to play. We are having the time of our lives, honestly. We were just having lots of Arebas, lots of fun. That was something I loved about that relationship with, with Ben is that we, no matter how bad uh, situations got, we always managed to find the fun in it. And that was something that I, that's really powerful and stayed with me. We kept playing, we kept playing, and actually it's going phenomenally well. Like the, the luck is on our side, the skill is on our side, we're out playing people, we're out maneuvering people, we're out I, running people, which is a poker turn where you get lucky against other people. And we get to the, down to the point where we're four people left and we're like first or second in chips. It's like close between us and one other person called uh, Gibbles, we called him, and Gibbler, his name was. <laughs> And so four people left, we're in, I'm actually in a pot at this point and we're on the river, which is like the last decision. So the pot's already got relatively big and the internet goes out. And this time it ain't coming back. It's looking really, really dicey. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, Ben, I've got, a, I've got an idea. You sit here in this internet, we'll keep our phones on us. So I tell Ben, you keep your phone on you. I'll keep my phone on me. You stay here, tell me if the internet comes back. I'll look around other places in Plata Carmen. So I leg it out of there. And bear in mind, I'm in my pajamas. Uh, <laughs> I've never had a problem with kind of dressing down in public. So I was in my pajamas, laptop in hand, sprinting through Playa del Carmen with my mouth slapping against my leg and I'm asking internet or internet or because you know I'm stupid and don't know the word for internet unless it's that in which case I'm a genius and I'm going into bars into restaurants into just random places and no internet no internet no internet and eventually lo and behold I find a Starbucks and I run in I'm like internet or and they're like yes see Internet or <laughs> whatever they said. So I slam my computer down, no, not even a password. Thank you, Starbucks, for the free Wi-Fi. And I managed to get in in the same hand that I left because you get when you disconnect from a from a hand, sometimes you get an extra amount of time for you to reconnect. So you get like a few minutes. And uh, I play that hand, and I call Ben over. We get back to the Starbucks, and we're having the run of our lives. You know, it's just me playing, but we're having together. The energy is just accumulated. And every hand we win, we're fucking Idaho, Yahoo! And people are looking at us like, these guys really like that, uh, that game they're playing there. Huh, weird. So we get, get, get into the corner, so I'm not standing in the middle. So we get into the corner, we're down to three, we're down to two, we're heads up one on one, me versus Gibbler, me versus the old Gibbles. And we actually make a deal. And a deal is when there's, say, a first is what, 1.4 million, second is like, 1 million, so you're playing for 400,000 difference. Sometimes you make a deal to decrease the variance of having to like play for 400,000 against one person. And I actually asked for a little bit more money than I was meant to, I was pretty cheeky about that, and he gave it because I was the, the better player on, on average. And we ended up cashing for 1.2 million, I think, and then playing for another 100,000. And actually the first hand in heads up was one of the sickest bluffs I've ever made in my life, if I don't mind saying so myself. And we play, we play, we play, we play, and we crush Gibbles. We take his soul out of his body, extract it from his very essence, and we won. I think it was $1.3 million. 
I could be wrong on that. I think it was $1.3 million. And that is the story of how I made over a million dollars in the Starbucks. I might be the world record holder for how much money has been made in the Starbucks in a single day. Thank you. Hold it up.